The Human Shore, A History, Fort Popham. Named after Captain George Popham, founder of the 1607 Popham Colony. Construction on Fort Popham began in 1861. The fort was garrisoned during the U.S. Civil War and after, up until 1869 when construction was halted. It never saw military action. Popham's location was important, occupying a rocky point where the Kennebec River broadens out into the Atkins Bay, less than a mile from the sea. Henry Dunnick notes, at this point the river channel is narrow and the current so swift that any vessel attempting to pass must run close under the guns of the fort. The situation, armament, and strength of the fort were such that so long as its guns were well served, it would have been practically impossible for warships of the Civil War period to have passed. A serious attempt to force the river entrance would have involved a landing in an attempt to carry the work from the rear, hence the moat, and small guns and loopholes commanding the beach. Although it was never fully finished, Fort Popham was built of massive cut granite blocks. It was built to mount 42 heavy guns, but only two tiers of casements were completely finished. What else do we know about the history of Fort Popham? It is from Private Cyrus W. Longley that we are given an insight into the soldier's daily life. Cyrus Longley was born in Bath on January 10, 1841, the oldest of four children of Nathaniel and Sarah Longley. Cyrus was educated at schools in Bath, and as a young man, he trained to be a photographer, a rare profession for the time. Records show that Longley joined the seventh company of the unassigned Maine Infantry Volunteers in 1863 at the age of 22. Young Longley served at Fort Popham from 1864 to 1865, where he worked with 40 other volunteer soldiers from Maine on the construction of the fort. Although he worked on the fort on most days, in his spare time, Longley sketched his comrades at work as they constructed the granite walls. One picture shows a long barrack building with several soldiers mustered outside. In other pictures, Longley shows his fellow soldiers working on the granite walls and fishing off a nearby pier. The Phippsburg Historical Society has a newspaper article from 1892 in which another soldier, John Goff from Lewiston, describes a typical workday. We half camped, half lived in shanties. It was get up early and eat a hearty breakfast. The food was better than most of the boys in Blue got. Then at noon, there was time for dinner and the smoking of a pipe full of our best tobacco before we went back to work. The nearest that we ever came to killing a man at Fort Popham was when one of the bosses was jammed between two pieces of granite. He never did a day's work again. After the Civil War, work on Fort Popham came to a halt. For the next 30 years, the United States went through a difficult transition period as memories of the war remained painful. The soldiers in the Fort Popham garrison were demobilized and the guns were scattered around the state. Like Fort Popham, there's lots of other forts around Casco Bay and all along the main coast. What all of the infrastructure has in common is hardly any of it was used. It begs the question, was all this necessary? Was it a waste of time and resources? Or did we need this infrastructure to deter sea conflicts? We may never know, but we do have the remains of these structures as reminders of the human history of the men who lived here and what their lives were like.